How do superheroes time travel? I think it's time we covered this. Science behind time travel. Time traveling has always been a huge thing in superhero and even just action and sci-fi media. I figured that now would be the best time to cover this topic. We got the ending of the newest season of The Flash, which centered on the idea of the aftermath of time travel, we got Doctor Strange reversing time about half a year ago, and we even got the official ending of Samurai Jack this year, a show built upon the idea of time travel. There's a more practical reason that now is the absolute best time to cover this topic, but I'll get to that in a bit. So let's ask ourselves, how do superheroes time travel? Well first off, who here knows what time is? I mean, in a real, physical sense. No hands? Maybe a few? Well, don't worry, because we're going to take a closer look at time. Time itself is not exactly something that can be easily imagined. We can all look at time as a clock, or a sundial, or a set of numbers, but those are all only measurements. We use tools like sundials and clocks and numbers to represent a construction of time we set for ourselves so as to record the passing of events. Don't get it wrong, time does exist but it's not bound to a clock or numbers. It's bound to space. Space-time, as it's been scientifically dubbed, was first thought of by H.G. Wells in his novel The Time Machine. In his book, H.G. Wells talked about a fourth-dimensional force that contained up, down, forward, backward, and past and future. For those of you who want a better insight as to what I mean by dimensions, you can check out my video on Planet X. For those of you who don't want to spend time doing that, I'll give you a quick rundown. Dimensions are planes of existence that, theoretically, everything that exists is subject to. There is the first dimension, a plane of existence with only a flat plane that has points on it. Everything in this first dimension has no real size. The second dimension is a plane of existence where forward, backward, up and down exist. Similar total would be like being a stick figure. Finally, we have our third dimension which we reside in, that possesses forward, backward, up, down, width, and depth. This is what gives our existence the ability to move in seemingly any direction. However, H.G. Wells wrote about a fourth dimension, in which the past and present are also traversable. This was eventually to become part of a real scientific theory, which was proposed by none other than Albert Einstein. So what does this have to do with space-time? Well, look at it like this. When an object, or anything for that matter, moves, it has moved in space. That is undeniable. However, it is impossible for something to move through space and not time. An object or an entity cannot be moved physically from one point in space to another, and yet not have moved at all from the position it started at during the point in time that it was at its starting point. It's impossible. Therefore, time and space do not exist independent of each other. Rather, they exist as a flat plane of space and time singularity, which expands over the entire universe. This flat plane is space-time. Space-time is actually the reason we have gravity, or at least we think it is. Objects with mass actually create dips in space-time, like you see here with this planet, and things orbit planets because they are rolling along these dips, like the moon here. So, what does this have to do with time travel? Here's where we segue into something very interesting. Recent studies have shown that time travel is mathematically possible. It involved bending space-time like bending a piece of paper. Something riding along this bend could effectively time travel by riding the curve back to a point where it was before. But because of the curve's nature, it is no longer going forward in space-time, but backwards. This, in the most basic sense, is traveling to the past. According to these studies, if there were some kind of time box around a traveling subject, time travel is possible. The subject would go forward in the space-time bend, like we see here, but would loop back around to a previous point. However, how this box would be able to bend space-time's curvature like this is a total unknown. 
All we know right now is that math says it could happen. Speaking in terms of superheroes, we actually do see a lot of similar concepts play out like this. A time machine in general is like a box around a traveling subject. While I don't know if speed or anything like that can affect time, we also have theoretical time boxes, as I like to call them, in the Speed Force in The Flash and the Mirror Dimension in Doctor Strange. These extra pocket dimensions could be acting as a box that a subject can enter and can use to travel backwards along the space-time curve. So, there we have it. Although we don't yet know how to, we do have a mathematical idea on how time travel could work, and weirdly, it matches up with a lot of superhero media. What do you guys think? Do concepts like the Speed Force and the Mirror Dimension work with serving as a time box? I've gotta say, it's weird that the correlation there exists. To think that we've just mathematically proved that time travel is possible is even weirder. What times we live in, right? Hey guys, hope you all enjoyed that episode of Science Behind Superheroes. If you guys did, make sure to leave a like and leave a comment as for what superheroes are revealing you guys want to see me do next. Uh, I'm actually going to do Wonder Woman next, but before like I even say any of that, I want to say how like incredible researching this video was. This is just... We have mathematically proved that, yes, time travel is like theoretically possible. This is absolutely like mind-boggling to me. Like, this is it. This is like... The culmination of almost all sci-fi fiction is leading up to something at this point. And we're like getting to a point where we're either going to fundamentally disprove or prove that we can time travel. And if we prove that we can, which we're getting closer to than disproving it, it's only a matter of time before we figure out how to. That's just... I, I can... I, words aren't enough to even like talk about how incredible that would be. I don't want to ramble for too long, so I'm just, like, expressing my words here. This is just... I have no words. I have no words. Um, if you guys want a better understanding, make sure to look up these studies. Uh, I'll, I'll leave some links in my description so you guys can read about them. Uh, this is incredible, guys. I just can't... I hope you guys had a lot of fun learning about it, because I certainly did. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Next week, I'm going to do a Wonder Woman special. Um, I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.